Praise the Lord. Glad to know that I am a child of God. I'm chosen. God chose me to be his child. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you guys? Great to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Great to be in the house of the Lord. I have a great message for you this morning. Amen. As always, I have a great message for you this morning. But before I do so, before I share the message with you this morning, I want you to repeat these words for me because the Bible declares the power of life and death. And the Lord, what you say matters. So I want you to repeat this word with me. I can do great things. Amen. Because Jesus Christ is with me. He promised to never leave me. He promised to never leave me. Amen. Amen. I love God. God. And I love people. I love people. Because the Holy Spirit lives inside of me. The Holy Spirit is greater, greater than the enemy. My life is safe. My life is safe. My life is safe. Because yes. God, my Father, is watching over me. Amen. He's in control of everything. Amen. Amen. I'm walking. I'm walking. Toward glorification. Amen. To meet Jesus. My Lord and Savior. And God, people say, hey, Amen. This is my message for you this morning. Live with no regrets. That's my message for you this morning. Live with no regrets. Our text is Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. I want to teach you this morning how to live with no regrets. Regrets. Let me read this text for you. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. Paul was speaking. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own. Because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Everybody say, I belong to Jesus. Yeah, he made me his own. Brothers or sisters, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing that I do, forgetting what lies behind the man and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul said, you know what? I made up my mind to do one thing. Forget what lies behind. Amen? Amen. To press on toward the goal. He has a vision. He has a goal. The goal of glorification. He said, I, I, I'm not going to dwell on my yesterday to live with regrets. I'm going to focus on what's ahead. What do regrets mean? If you are someone who always living with feeling of sadness or disappointment over something that took place in your life, then you are living with regrets. And this morning I want to share with you five strategies that I learned from the word of God to help me live without regrets. You deserve to live with, with no regrets. God wants you to live with no regrets. So I want to share with you five strategies you can use to live with no regrets. Are you ready? Yeah. Amen. Are you ready to learn five things that you can do to live without regrets? I've been using them. They work for me. They work for me. And they can work for you too. But those five strategies that I want to share with you, they all have to do with I statements. I want you to use five I statements to live with no regrets. Is the first statement that you I want you to, to use. I choose to focus on the good yesterday. Can you repeat that with me? I choose to focus on the good yesterday. Can you repeat that? I choose to focus on 
the good yesterday. When you look at your yesterday, you will see things that happened you were proud of and things that took place you are not happy with. This is a true fact of every human being. Yesterday consists of good and bad, happiness and sadness, success and defeat, wrong choices and good choices. I know that my yesterday was not perfect. I know that. I know my yesterday was not perfect. So do your yesterday. Was your yesterday perfect? No. Your yesterday consists of things that you like and things that you dislike. But what do I do with my yesterday? Well, I choose to focus on the good yesterday. Amen. 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 If I'm going to live with no regrets, I have to make a choice to focus on the good Amen. yesterday. You cannot look at your yesterday. All you can see is bad things. No. There are things that God did for you you should be proud of. Amen. There are things that you are able to accomplish because of your yesterday. You should look at your yesterday and say, you know what? I made up my mind to focus on my good yesterday. For example, David chose to focus on the good yesterday to defeat Goliath. Let's look at what David did. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 22 to 37. And David said to King Saul, let no man's heart fail because of Goliath. Every one of you at some point in your life will face a Goliath. And if you're going to defeat the Goliath of your life, you must choose to focus on the good yesterday. Here's what David said. Your servant will go and fight this Philistine. Wow, what a determination. What a confidence. Let no man's heart fail because of him. I will fight the Goliath. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him. For you are but a youth. He has been a man of war for his youth. But David said, Listen to this carefully. Your servant used to keep sheep for his father, past tense. And when there came a lion, past tense, yesterday, or a bear, yesterday, and took a lamb from the flock, yesterday, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And he arose against me. I caught him by his beard, buried, uh, and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. He has defied the air armies of the living God. And David said, The Lord who delivered me, past tense, from the lion, will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. So David said, You know what? I know I am capable of fighting this Goliath because of my yesterday. I focus on the good yesterday. Yesterday, God delivered me. The God who did it once can do it again. So David focused on the good yesterday to defeat Goliath. If you are going to successfully solve the problems that God allowed to come into your life today, you have to remember your past success. You cannot live your life focusing on what did not work. You cannot spend your entire life mourning over a boyfriend or a girlfriend who left you. That's a waste of your time. 
Don't choose to focus on the bad side of the relationship. Maybe there were some good moments. Focus on the good moments to help you make the right choice today. I choose to focus on the good yesterday because this is what's good for me. Why would I choose to focus on what didn't work when I know they're going to make me feel sad? Why would I bring sadness into my life? What is the first strategy to use? To live with no regrets? I choose to focus on the good yesterday. How many of you are proud of your good yesterday? Amen. Focus on that. That's what you need to use right now to face your current problems. Let's break it down. You want to break it down? You want to break it down? Let's break it down. All right. Let's look at the word yesterday. All right. Are you with me? All right. Let's break the word yesterday down. Yes. One word. There. Another word. Day. How many words do we have? Three words. Three words. All right. Let's break it down. Let's break it down. Yes means what? Agree with. What? There. Three. What? Day. Now, you don't have to be a theologian to understand what number three means in the Bible. Right? So when you think about number yes, ter, day, ter, three, day, you should see that number three stands for God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So my yesterday is yes to God. Yes to Jesus. Amen. Yes to the Holy Spirit. That's my yesterday. Amen. Amen. Yesterday. My yesterday belongs to God. My yesterday belongs to Jesus. Amen. My yesterday belongs to the Holy Spirit. Amen. And because my yesterday is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, my yesterday is good. Amen. You want to break it down? I'm going to break it down. <laughs> yes, there, there. So when you think about yesterday, think about agree with God. Agree with Jesus. Agree with the Holy Spirit that nothing is too hard for God. No matter what happens to you, agree with God. God can use it for your own good. Yesterday. Let's break it down again. Yes means what? Agree. Third. Three. And three, number three in the Bible, we present God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Yes to God. And that makes your day better. You want to break it down again? I got something else for you. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 1. If you go to Genesis chapter 1, pay attention to the third day. Third, three, what? Day three. If you go to Genesis chapter one, you focus on the third day. You know what we will see? Increase. Production. Your yesterday, if you use it wisely, it should be an increase for you today. But you got to focus on the good yesterday. David yesterday was an increase for him. A productive day when he faced Goliath. Go with Genesis chapter, chapter 1. You will see what, what took place in the, third, in the third day. I don't have time to read it for you. You can break it down on yourself, all right? Break it down on Genesis chapter 1, verse 9 to 12. You want me to read it? No. You see, um, so what do I want you to do with your yesterday? Delete the bad yesterday from your life. What do you need to do? Delete, Delete the bad yesterday from your life. This can help you live with no regrets. Bad memories yesterday are gone. And they will never come back if you delete them in your mind. I live with no regrets because I choose to focus on the good yesterday. Amen. Here's the second strategy. Are you, are you with me? Are you with me? Yeah. Here's the second strategy. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I 
me that. He just said, I made mistakes, but I'm not a mistake. Amen. Come on. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? I made mistakes, but I am not a mistake. Amen. I am wonderfully made by God. Amen. God made me in his own image. Amen. He's smart. I am smart. Amen. He's intelligent. I am intelligent. I made mistakes. He shows that I am a human. But I'm more than a human being. I'm a chosen child of God. Amen. My father can take care of my mistakes. You know what I said? My father is bigger than my mistakes. You know what I said? Yes, sir. I am wonderfully made by God. Fearfully made by God. I made mistakes. But I'm not a mistake. I know some of you know how to cook. When you cook, right? And you don't like the taste of the food. What do you do? You bright. Huh? You change it. Why you change it? Because you don't like it. If you don't like your mistakes, change them. Amen. They don't make you. You make them. The food doesn't make you. You make the food. Amen. You can change it for that any time that you want. Amen. 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 But if you don't like your mistakes, I'm done with you this morning. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you don't like your mistakes, change them. How do you do that? Two things you have to do. Number one, here's what you need to do. You need to cultivate a Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, my sin. What does that mean? Whatever is true. Whatever is honorable, whatever is praiseworthy, whatever is good, dwell on these things. You have to cultivate a biblical mind to delete your mistakes. That's the first thing you have to do. You need to accept the mind of Jesus Christ. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. Here's the second thing that you have to do. Love God. You know what I say? How do you delete your mistakes? Love God. Is how it works. Because you love God, here's what God will do for you. I want you to repeat this one. I love, God. I love God. Because he's about to do something great for me. I love God. I love God. I love God. I love God. I'm going to honor him first. I'm going to seek him first. Here's what's going to happen when you love God. When you love God, in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, you say, God will work out all things. Good or bad. Mistakes. Everything that happened in your life, he will work them out for your uncle. Amen. You know why? Because I love God. Amen. I made mistakes, but I'm not a mistake. Do you remember the story of, of Joseph? He made a mistake. Right? He made a mistake. One mistake that he made, he shared his dreams with his brothers. His brothers. And as a result, his brother get Jabez and they sold him into slavery. That was a mistake of, you know, that Joseph did, right? Yeah. But David, Joseph said, you know what? I don't have my family with me. I don't have my brothers, my parents with me. But I choose to love them. And God is with me. You know what God did with his mistake? He brought him out of it. And he became the prime minister in a foreign country. Amen. When God was there, Amen. Amen. God turned his mistake into success. He can do the same for you. Same for me. Give your mistakes to God. He will work them out for you. Don't live with regrets because of your mistakes. Amen. You hear me? You chose a one man, there's another man out there for you. You chose a one girl, God has another one for you. Amen. Don't live with regrets. Amen. 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 If I write a job, believe me, there's a better job out there for you. Yeah. Disney World. Let me go. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me open this fire and this is Disney. You know Disney? Yes. Mm -hmm. Based on my story revealed, he was fired. He got fired from his job. You know why he got fired? Because his supervisor said he was not creative. For lack of creativity. He went home, had a piece of paper, 
And he said, you know what? I need to draw. And he started drawing. To prove himself that he was the agent there. And today we have this deal. You might be a mistake for somebody else. But in the eyes of God, you are not a mistake. Amen. You are his child. Amen. His daughter. His son. And he has great plans for you. Amen. 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 What's the second thing that I have to do to live without regrets? That. Yeah. You will really love regrets, right? I made mistakes, but I'm not a mistake. The third thing that you have to do to live without regrets. I love the right Tomorrow. Amen, amen. What did I say? I love, I love the right tomorrow. What is the right tomorrow? The tomorrow without excessive worries. I have a father in heaven who is taking care of today and will continue providing for my next tomorrow. He needs no child. He needs no child support to take care of me. Did you know that God has. We don't have to give God child support to take care of you. So why are you worried? Of what might come tomorrow. I choose the right tomorrow. I love the right tomorrow. The tomorrow of glorification. That's what I want. The tomorrow of accomplishing my dreams. The tomorrow of becoming a family therapist. The tomorrow of becoming what I want to become. Amen. That's what I want to focus on. The tomorrow of becoming wealthier. Healthier, stronger, mightier. That's the tomorrow I choose. Amen. That's the tomorrow I love. Amen. The tomorrow that my father prepares for me. A tomorrow of blessings, it not curses. A tomorrow of joy, but not sadness. A tomorrow of hope, but not disappointment. A tomorrow of love, but not hate. I choose to love the right tomorrow. This is how Jesus Christ put it in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not be worried about your life. Listen to me carefully. If you focus too much on your yesterday, you're going to live a pessimistic life. And you will get stuck in today. If you focus too much on tomorrow, you will worry a lot. And as a psychologist, as a psychologist, as a mental health counselor, a lot of people experiencing anxiety because of fear of what might happen. They focus on the wrong tomorrow. I love the right tomorrow. The tomorrow that my Father in heaven had prepared for me before I came into this world. This is what just like, don't worry about your life. What will you eat? What, what will you? What? Right? That's tomorrow, right? What? Who am I going to get married with? That's tomorrow. What will you drink? Know about your body. What would you put on? Is not life more important than food? Focus on your life now. The body more important than the clothes? Appreciate your body. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow or weep, nor garden and the birds, but yet your Father in heaven feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the, of the, of the field, how they grow. Deny their toil or not span. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not away like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, Will he, will he not much clothe you or you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall I we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, but all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Why would you want to add tomorrow problems to today's problems? There was a person who said, I have one regret in my life. I have one regret in my life. He said, what's regret? He was 70 years old. He said, I have one regret in my life. He said, what's the regret? He said, I have one regret in my life. He said, what's the regret? 
You say, I have one regret. I say, what is a regret? You are 17 years old. Just speak. You can talk. You say, I have one regret in my life. You say, what's your regret? You say, I had problems that I never had. What? You say, I had problem in my life that I never had. So what do you mean by that? You say, well, you know, I, I spent a, a good portion of my life worry about what might happen, but it never happened. Whatever is going to happen, wait until it happen, and God will give you the grace to deal with it. Amen. Yeah. Don't make it happen before time in your imagination. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I love the right tomorrow. 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 Tomorrow when I walk in the aisle with my future husband, my future wife, that's it tomorrow that I'm focused on. I'm dreaming on this. Tomorrow when I get graduated. Amen? Amen. The tomorrow when I get my own business. The tomorrow when I get my dreams accomplished. This is the tomorrow that I'm focused on. Amen. Amen. Now, you, you, know, you, you know your mad wife. Right? You know your life consists of yesterday, right? To, today, and tomorrow. So if I deal effectively with my yesterday and my tomorrow, all right? So let's say, for example, you delete yesterday from your calendar and you delete also tomorrow. What do you have left? So here's what you need to do. Here's the next step you have to do. I choose to enjoy today. You cannot live without a regret if you ignore today. I choose to enjoy today. Why? Because this is the day that the Lord. Amen. What do I need to do in that day? Rejoice. Amen. And be glad. Find something that God is doing in your life right now to rejoice. Amen. Rejoice over the fact that you still have a roof over your head. Rejoice you are able to feed your family. Rejoice you got clothes to wear. If God can take care of you today, God will take care of you tomorrow. Delete yesterday from your calendar and tomorrow. Enjoy today. You deserve it. Yes. Today is a present. What is today? It's a present. What do you do with the present? Open it up. Enjoy it. Amen. God give you today as a present. Two. I don't want to break this one down. Two. Day. You want me to break it down? <laughs> I'm not going to do that, okay? Mm -hmm. so, 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 today is a present from God to me to enjoy. Today is a day that I choose to rejoice. Because I'm still alive. It's a day to celebrate. Because I can say to my family, I love you. You cannot say I love you yesterday. You cannot say I love you tomorrow. But today you can hug your children. Today you can hug your family. Today you can be happy with somebody. Today you can go to the beach. Today you can go to the store. Enjoy today. Amen. Today you can pray. It's not about yesterday I didn't pray. It's what you are doing today. Because what you do today can determine what's going to happen to you tomorrow. Amen, amen, amen. Today. Today. This is the day that the Lord has been there. What I'm going to do? Rejoice. He said, Rejoice. 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 It's a choice that I have to make. I choose to enjoy today. Amen. Amen. For all the reasons you can find in your life. Here's the last step. I choose the white people to be with. Amen. I choose the white people to be with. You cannot live. You cannot live without regrets if you have the wrong people in your life. I choose to spend time only with people who can help me live with no regrets. This is what I learned over the years. There are some people that I had in my life, I have to delete them. You know why? Every time I see them, they remind me of my bad yesterday. Because of what they say, how they live, what they believe. You know what? I cut them off. There are certain people that you need to cut off from your life. You know why? They're not good for you. 
They're not good for you. They are takers. They never give you, but they always have a problem. Never a solution. Why? They want you to solve their problems. I want you guys to practice some chapter one. When it comes to choosing the white people to be in your life, you don't want to live with regrets. The Bible says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. Don't have wicked people in your life. Not stand in the way of sinners, people who like to transgress the law. Not sit in the seat of scoffers, people who, who ridicule you because of your dream. But his delight is in the law of God. Be friends with people who love God, who love people. Amen. You cannot go on with that. Be selective and whom you bring into your life. And the Bible says when you do so, your life will be like a tree planted by streams of water that gives you food in its season and its leaf doesn't wither. And all he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so. You want to be prospered, you want to be successful, make sure you choose the white right person. Why would you choose people who don't believe in education when you want to become a doctor? What do you think they're going to tell you? Well, that's too much time. Well, guess what? You go to school, the time will pass. You don't go to school, the time will still pass. So you better have to learn something while the time is passing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Choose the white people in your life. Amen. What are the five statements? I five I statements you can use to live with no regrets. Oh. I didn't break it down the white word. I go for five. Number one. I choose to focus on the good yesterday. Number two. I made mistake, but I am not a mistake. I'm too beautiful to be a mistake. Amen. I'm doing so. Amen. What do you think, brother Mike? I am not a mistake. But I'm allowed to make mistakes. What I'm gonna do with them? Learn from them to become better. Third. I love the right tomorrow. I don't want a tomorrow that will make me worry today. I want a tomorrow of success. Dream big. Dream big. I want a tomorrow where I can see my grandchildren. I'm not going to focus on what you're not going to. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. My building is not for anyone. But I'm going to leave. That's the good thing. As the first, first one. Huh? I choose to enjoy today. What are you going to do to enjoy today? today? Are you going to complain? No. No. What are you going to do? Be grateful for what you have. Thank God for your parents. Thank God for your friends. Thank God for everything that you have. Be grateful. Find something to be grateful for. And celebrate. Eat. I love Jesus Christ. He loved God. John the Baptist didn't like one. He stayed in the way. But Jesus, he drank, he had fun. And they say he had a demon. Have fun, okay? Life is too short. Enjoy life. Amen. Enjoy life with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Rejoice and be glad. What's the last one? Choose the right. If you do those five things I can share with you, you are a candidate to live with no regrets. I deserve to live with no regret because God did me. Amen. Until then, I will see you next time. We love you. Join the Holy Spirit so together we can live with no regret. Amen.